My name is Paul Zobek. I am president and founder of Zobek Consulting LLC based in San Diego, California. My company provides health and safety services to organizations nationwide, such as in the area of mechanical and electrical safety. I have been doing safety for 33 years, and I actually got interested in the area of machine safeguarding about, uh, gosh, about uh, 25 years ago when I was working for an organization and I saw that guarding was not being utilized to the fateful level that it should be or what it was designed to do. As a result of that particular experience, I've been able to evolve my safety career into both risk assessment and risk reduction as it relates to machine safeguarding. Basically what I want to cover here is a story that had happened within a uh, chemical or adhesive facility a couple of years ago. Basically I was retained to uh, assess a machine guarding situation and implement controls as a result of the risk that was evaluated in conjunction with uh, this particular incident. Uh, the background as far as this company, this company makes adhesive products for electronics. There was a piece of equipment that uses converging rollers. These converging rollers come together and form less than a 3 8 inch pinch point where the operator was able to reach into the point of operation during production. The operator had access and as a result of having this access, the incident had occurred and I was retained to uh, not only assess the uh, initial risk or sorry, the inherent risk uh, as a result of exposure to this point of operation, but I was also retained to suggest control measures to reduce the risk in this, in, in this particular situation. Okay? Uh, methods, as far as methodologies that were used that are available to us as safety professionals to assess risk and to reduce risk, which is the most important thing as a potential for worker injuries. Uh, methods were used from ANSI B11.0, which is used to assess risk before and after controls are implemented. Basically going through the risk assessment sequence as it relates to machine safeguarding, as far as hazard identification, evaluating that existing risk and doing risk reduction, and then having a residual risk as a result of uh, implementation of your control measures. So as far as hazard identification was concerned, Based on quantitative tools that are available, there are machine safeguarding sticks that are available. They look like measuring sticks. And basically what they do is they measure distance from the point of operation, and they are also able to assess what guarding height is going to be required as a result of that guard opening to be able to get product through that converging roller, which had happened in this particular, which was a setup as far as this particular piece of equipment. Based on those tools available, it was determined that the worker had the ability to reach into the point of operation. So in that manner, the hazard was identified. As far as existing risk is concerned, what I utilized was a 4x4 matrix for risk assessment that is in ANSI B11.0. Based on the exposure frequency and the existing or the injury severity, I was able to determine that there was a high risk which warranted further action as a result of the uh, operator's ability to reach into that point of operation. Engineering controls as far as risk reduction as a result of using that guarding stick to make a determination on how big that guard opening can be and the distance that the operator or the guard plane needed to be from the point of operation was actually implemented as a result of the engineering controls in the risk reduction process. Risk reduction techniques per ANSI B11, based on our hierarchy of controls, what I had made a determination was that this was a very good engineering control. Basically what ANSI B11 allows us to do, and I've listed the annexes, annex E and H within the standard, gives us some risk reduction guidance as a result of implementation of these engineering controls. I was able to get a risk reduction as far as two levels on my likelihood variable as a result of implementing this type of safeguarding. As a result, I went from a high risk to a low risk based on what ANSI B11 stated or what was in the techniques or the recommended techniques within ANSI B11. This is what we called as low as reasonably practical. 
as far as residual risk was concerned, and we were able to accept risk as a result of that risk reduction process and thus protect the worker as far as that uh, point of operation or those converging rollers are concerned. So as you can see from before, uh, bef the before and after, my risk before my controls, my risk after my controls, uh, the operator was not able to reach within that point of operation. Other things to note as far as conclusions uh, of this study, acceptable risk was accomplished. It was accomplished with minimal costs. When you have a fixed guarding situation or you're able to implement a fixed guard, it's pretty much maintenance free during production, you know, as far as implementation. It was uh, implemented as far as minimal interruption in production. Production did not change. This particular guarding technique did not reduce the amount of throughput that this organization was able to make as a result of uh, implementation of this, uh, this control. No changes in production or throughput as a result of implementation, but we were able to reduce risk quite significantly as a result of uh, the tools that are available to us within this process. Uh, significant injury reduction achieving ALARP as low as re reasonably practical conditions as far as the risk assessment technique that was available in ANSI BLF.